Well, when I got fired, because I had to go home and tell my wife that I was fired. And uh, at that point, I uh, didn't want to do that. To well, see, what happened was I got fired, and they, uh, uh, I, they, I went home. I went home at 2 o'clock in the morning. I drank the, the rest of the night, and I went home and told my wife I was fired. Uh, but I was going to get drunk the next day, too. But they told me to stick around the house. The union will get in touch with me the next day. And so they did. And they wound up uh, saying, hey, just hold on around the house for a while. We're trying to work things out. And when you talk about guilt, uh, for those time I picked up a drink from December right to July, I knew I used the death of that child to be allow me to do the things I wanted to do. And it was a tremendous burden that, 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 that was, I used that. And unfortunately, uh, it, uh, I lost friends during that period of time. Uh, I did a lot of crazy things. Uh, the insanity was that I sold a Connie truck one day uh, in order to get me uh, the alcohol I needed to, to survive. And I would do almost anything. I'd rob, cheat, and steal. And uh, that isn't the way I was brought up. I was brought up to be, uh, you know, respect and to also tell the truth, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but I had gone to the point there where I'd do almost anything for alcohol. Uh, but thank God that uh, the circumstances were that uh, uh, they fired me. I got sober. And I walked into AA that night, and I knew I was going out to drink and, and die that. I knew there was nothing else I could do. But then when I walked into that room and I heard the laughter, I wanted part of that. And the way I did that was just to go to meetings. And I, and I had been, it's been up ever since. Well, I heard, I heard the laughter. I, I, the laughter, I, and I could see all of the, they were laughing at each other, at, at the dumb things that they did when they were drinking. And I did some dumb things. I was ashamed. Of it. I was very ashamed when I walked into AA. I wasn't going to tell anybody because if you got to know me, you wouldn't like me. And so I'm not going to tell you exactly what you were, uh, what I was doing, et cetera. And when I got into the program, got into AA, they told you you got to get a sponsor and get a group. And uh, I was kind of hesitant at first. Um, but what happened was that we started hanging around together after meeting, going to coffee shops, et cetera. And, and I wound up picking a, 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 a sponsor who was a lieutenant in the fire department in, uh, in New York City. And because uh, I could identify with him, because he stole a, he stole a fire truck one day. Uh, and I stole a Connie truck, so we, we, we giggled a bit. And so he was my sponsor. He was about seven years sober. Uh, but thank God for him. Uh, he was the person that was a catalyst that really uh, showed me what, uh, what he needed to do. Uh, since I hated God, I wasn't talking to, and I knew there was a God, but I, I, I blamed him for everything. And I grew up with a very uh, punishing God. Uh, you do something, you're gonna get punished. And uh, what'll happen is that uh, I didn't like that. But after a period of time, I began to transcend from the uh, punishing God to a very loving, caring God, to allow me to do this, allow me to go through it. And also, in speaking with uh, the sponsors and, and other people, I found out the death of the child got me sober. Without that, I would not be sober today. And uh, the reality is that uh, it was there. And thank God that at the same time, my wife uh, supported me. Um, what happened was that she, we had nobody at home. So she used to, she used to come to meetings with me, uh, open AA meetings. And uh, so at that time, we really began to the process of recovery from there. And it's been uphill ever since. Uh, I could not have designed my life any better than what it has been uh, uh, since I've been to AA. Uh, I've been fruitful. Uh, I've been, I have uh, three children that have uh, never seen me with a drink in my hand, but they also know that they are potentially becoming addicted because I think it's genetic. I think that it passes from genes and uh, that they are potentially, and also their kids might be potentially uh, addicted later on. And uh, so they're with that information, I can't change that. Uh, but the reality is I can give them the information to be able to use, to be able to combat whatever is necessary. Uh, we have a lot of laughter in our house. Uh, it's just fun. Uh, 